Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to make a Kumihimo bracelet. As you can see on the examples here, we've got these beautiful bracelets that are made using the cords. So in your kit, you will get a selection of different colours of your cords. So you can see we've got colours ranging um, from the blues to the greens and we have a multicoloured cord as well. You will also get your Kumihimo disc, which is what you're going to need to be able to create this beautiful braid. And then lastly, you're going to be able to get all of your findings as well. So we, in the findings pack, we have the toggle clasps, we have the end caps, which are going to close off the end of your bracelet and make it look a nice professional finish, your jump rings, and we also have these little um, attachments that you can pop on if you want to add charms to your bracelet. So to get started, what we need to do is take any colour of our cord. So you can have multiple colours of your cord. It doesn't have to be all the same colour. But what we're looking for is we need eight lengths of cord that are, tw uh, that are 55 centimetres long. So I, in this case, I've used all the yellow cords and all I've done is I've tied them in a knot at the end. So taking my Kumihimo disc, as you can see on the Kumihimo disc, we have got letters. So we've got the north, south, east and west points on our Kumihimo disc. These are what we're going to start with our reference points. So we take the knot of our eight cords and we pop it down through the middle and all I'm doing is just holding it steady with my finger on the back. We're now going to start to arrange these cords so that we have two cords on either point of our Kumihimo disc. So we take the first two cords and pop them one either side of the north. We're then going to take the next two cords and we're going to pop them again, this time either side of the west, the other two across to the east and then the last two down to the south. And then just taking the time just to check that they're not crossed over at all. So here I can see that my east cords are crossed over. So all I need to do is just take that one out and just lay them flat against the board. So now I've got nothing crossed over in the middle and they're all nice and neat in, in the centre of those letters. Okay, so this is our starting point. So it's a quite a simple braid. So all we're going to do is we're going to look at this top right hand cord. We're going to take that one out of the slot by the north and we're going to bring it down and we're going to pop it into the slot next to the south. So we've gone from top right to bottom right. We're now going to go from top, uh, so sorry, from bottom left to top left. So that's one completed um, stitch, if you like, or braid. I'm now going to turn my disc a quarter turn. So now I'm looking at the east now. So again, I take the top right cord, pop it into the bottom right slot take the bottom left cord, pop it into the top left slot and quarter turn anti-clockwise. And again now, take the top right and into the bottom right cord. Now, if I was going to leave this um, braid at any time, say go and have a cup of tea, answer the door, always leave it with the, the three cords at the bottom. That way, when you pick this up, you know that your first movement is this bottom left cord to go up to the top left. So if you always leave it in this kind of um, setup, so you have the three at the bottom, one at the top, and then the two either side, you'll know your first, your very first um, movement is this bottom left to go to the top left. So you're going to carry on braiding like this until you've got your desired length. And as you can see, you can actually go quite quick at just moving those two cords up and down. So top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left. Now, if I just pop this disc down and show you the other disc where there's some, um, I've done quite a little bit of braiding on this so you can actually see the braid coming out the bottom. And in this case, I've used the multicolored um, cord that's in the kit. So you can see there how that's starting to now appear into the bottom and it's perfectly braided. Again, like I said before, I've left my disc in this position so I know that my first move on this disc 
would be this bottom left going to the top and turn. And then I can carry on exactly the same as what I was doing with the previous disc. Just carry on braiding. So top right to bottom right, bottom left to top left and turn. Again, I want to leave this disc now. So I'm going to take the top right out, pop it into the bottom right, and I'm going to leave it at this point. So once you've got your desired length, so with, with your Kumihimo, you're looking for about, for a seven and a half inch bracelet, you're looking at for about six and a half to seven inches of Kumihimo because you can actually, with your clasps, it's going to add on that extra length. So I'm just going to pop that one down to the side and show you one that I've prepared here, which has now got my desired length. So if you're wanting to do something like a necklace rather than a bracelet, you would probably need about a meter and a half to two meters in each of the colors or in each of your threads. So if you wanted to do the necklace length, then all you, obviously all you would do is just carry on braid until you've got that necklace length. So we now need to seal these ends off. So what I've got here is I've got a little bit of cotton and all I've done is I've taken this off the board and I've tied a knot in all eight strands at the bottom. So now to be able to cut this, all I'm going to do is take my piece of core, um, my piece of cotton and just start to, so I've left a tail of about, about four inches there. And all I'm going to do is start to wrap this around my braid. And what this is going to do is it's going to act like a stopper for when I, I cut this and add the glue in place. So just keep winding that round until you get a nice tight finish because we don't want this to cut and to start to fray. So what you would do then is tie that in a little knot and then add a little dab of glue. So with the glue, either a super glue or something like a silicon based glue. And what you'll end up with is you'll end up with an end like this where you've got the cotton and then you've got the glued end so it's nice and finished. You then can take your end caps and as you'll see, these will fit perfectly on the end and cover up all of that underneath working. So it covers up the glue and to attach these, all you're gonna do is pop a little tiny bit of glue into the end cap and then push the end cap on. I'd always suggest having something like a baby wipe um, on hand just in case any of the glue gets onto the, um, onto the finding itself. So now we need to just add on to the toggle clasp and then we're finished. So with the toggle clasp, we're gonna take our two ends of our toggle clasp and we need two of our jump rings. Now the tools that we're going to use to attach the toggle clasp are our red handled flat nose or chain nose pliers and our blue handled round nose pliers. So we're going to look now at the picking up the jump ring. We're going to keep the cut of the jump ring to the top. So on the oval jump rings, they're actually cut on the, um, on the long side. Popping that into our pliers, I'm now going to open this jump ring towards me, sort of north to south, just a few degrees. So we don't need to open it too far. As you can see there, that's just enough to pop on our toggle clasp and then taking your end cap, popping that onto there as well. So you can see now how that's all in place. Using my pliers, I'm just going to close up this jump ring. So holding the jump ring still and twisting the jump ring backwards from south to north until the jump ring uh, is attached then to the toggle clasp and to the end cap. You're going to do this on the other part of your toggle clasp. So I'll just show you how, again, how simple this is. So just opening up the jump ring, popping on your toggle clasp, pop on your end cap. Start to close that up a little bit, using your pliers then on the other side of the jump ring, give that a little close. And with the jump rings, because um, you can open them a little bit more if you need to, you feel, don't feel free to just keep opening and closing that jump ring until you get that in place. So I've now got both ends of my toggle clasp completed. So the other part that you've got in your Kumihimo findings pack, you've got these little charm carriers. And what these are going to do is they're just going to slip onto your braid before you've popped the end caps on. 
pop that over the braid and then that then can facilitate you popping a little charm or a little bead of your choice onto there. So once you've glued your ends on, your finished bracelet will look like this. So you can see there at the back there, we have our, our lovely toggle clasp with our end caps. Everything looks very neat and professional and they're just beautiful bracelets to wear and make with all the family.